Hey hackers, Blue Cosmo from CCS here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I am here with another video. Today we're going to be showing you, or I'm going to be showing you, the Ducky Logger version 0.2. And this is the Ducky Logger. See what I did there? Ducky Logger? Rubber Ducky? Key Logger? No? Now a while back I made the Ducky Logger, which is a USB rubber ducky payload. And the USB rubber ducky is just a keystroke injection device. It's a programmable keyboard, right? The payload actually logged keystrokes using PowerShell, right? And every time the computer would start up, it would send the logs to us, the attacker, security professional, whatever. It was a really cool payload, but then I was like, well, we need to be able to send logs every hour and add some more um, cleaner code, more features, etc. So that's what Ducky Logger version 0.2 is. Let's check it out. Um, so here is the GitHub repository for the Ducky Logger. It's the same one as the previous one. I just added the new code to it, um, literally like <laughs> like 25 minutes ago. So yeah, if you guys aren't familiar with the Ducky Logger, don't worry, because I'm about to go literally over every single thing, not every single thing, literally go over everything that we did in the last video. So don't even have to check it out or anything like that. There's four main files in here, right? There's the payload, the p.ps1, the l.ps1, and the c.cmd. Requirements for the payload, you do need to have TwinDuck. Um, TwinDuck basically allows your uh, USB rubber ducky to work both as a like mass storage and as the USB rubber ducky. If you don't know how to do that, I have a video on how to set up TwinDuck. Um, yeah, see here. Oh, one note I'm gonna specify is that with our Gmail account, right? You must have LSA enabled on your Gmail. So let's go ahead and go to LSA or which stands for less secure access, this should be enabled. If this is not enabled, go ahead and just enable it so that way you can use the PowerShell code. So this is the payload.txt for the USB rubber ducky, right? This is going to be basically setting up all the, or setting up our payload so that way it can run successfully on our target's computer. You can see here that the first stage is basically running PowerShell, right? And then the second stage, we try to disable Windows Defender um this could show an error message if you don't have admin permissions but the payload will still work now this payload as far as of right now is not detectable by uh windows defender so stage three is when we actually move the other files into the appropriate directories and i'll kind of go into that a little bit later and then all we do is run the actual keylogger now when it comes to the other files in here we have a few other ones right so this is the c.cmd file this gets saved into the windows startup directory and all that this does is basically it starts two processes it is like two hidden processes right it runs that p.ps1 file that we have and the l.ps1 file that we have right and this is saved in the startup directory so every time the computer turns on both of these files start as hidden processes right so what do those two files do well we have the p.ps1 file the p.ps1 file is the actual keylogger right it's the powershell keylogger you would just put your gmail credentials in here and then it would log keystrokes and send you the credentials every um every hour now this does not have the functionality to send every hour all this is doing is logging keystrokes and adding it to a file so the way our payload is able to actually send the logs every hour is through this l.ps1 file now this l.ps1 file has times from quad zero all the way to 2300. Now, this is basically from midnight to 11 p.m. Keep it in military time. Um, that's just how the format works, but it works on computers that use both 12 hour time and military time. Um, but basically we have all these, all 24 hours of the day. Then we just basically sort these times in chronological order in case if they aren't. And then we do this with an infinite loop. So it will run every day, right, infinitely. And then it cycles through each time and if the time has passed already then it will just skip it basically it says it's checking for the most recent upcoming time right so let's say it's what time right now 2053 so if it's 2053 right now it's going to wait until 2100 right and then once that time hits it's going to run the powershell keylogger that means that this won't run until it hits the hour but luckily for us the payload runs the keylogger immediately and the c.cmd file runs the keylogger immediately so that way, no matter what happens, the keylogger is always running. So that's how the code works. Let's actually get this onto our computer and see if we can actually um, use it, right? So let's go ahead and copy this. I'm going to open up a terminal. I'm going to go ahead and get clone this payload. So now if we check our directory, we can see that we have the ducky logger right here. So let's go ahead and change directories into our ducky logger. There you go. If we list in here, whoops, 
we can see that we have all the files we need to do. So now it's time we follow the instructions on the GitHub and set this up, right? So instructions say, first of all, we need to change the R credentials in the p.ps1 file, all right? So let's go to that p.ps1 file. We can open up this whole thing and add them so that way we have a good working environment to edit the files in. All right, so we are on the Atom version of, or we have all of our files opened up in Atom. Let's go ahead and add our credentials to this payload, right? So we added our credentials to the p.ps1 file, right? You would just put whatever your email is in here and your password is in there. Now in line 20 of our payload.txt file, we need to change the letter L to the name of our um, micro SD card. Now the letter, I have my micro SD card already called the letter L, so I can skip the step. But if your micro SD card is something else, change that letter L to whatever the name of your micro SD card is. Now, make sure you have TwinDuck flashed. Um, I have TwinDuck flashed on my USB rubber duck already. So now it's time to encode our payload, right? So I'm going to go ahead and CD out of here, CD into our encoder. Make sure you guys have your ducky encoder um, to encode your payloads, right? So I'm going to use the Python version. So Python 2, duckencoder.py. I'm going to use the tag i, and the tag i is going to get our input file, which is out of this directory in our ducky logger directory and our payload.txt. Then we want to output our file into that same directory. So our duck key logger, and then we're going to call the file inject.bin and we can hit enter. So now if we go ahead, CD out of here and into our ducky logger, we can see that we have our inject.bin file now in here. So all we have to do is put this on our micro SD card label L. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to open up Kaja. All right, and I'm basically just gonna grab all the files in here. I'm gonna hit copy, go to my L, which is the micro SD card, and paste all my files into here. And then we can simply eject our micro SD card once it's done. Uh, take your micro SD card out, put it into your Ooh. <laughs> put it into your USB rubber ducky, and we are ready to deploy it. All right, hackers. So now we are on my Windows computer with the USB rubber ducky with the payload on it. So now all we have to do is plug it in, and we will see a new email appear because the USB rubber ducky is letting us know that it successfully ran, and it's sending the logs um, showing you, hey, the log, the key logger is on the computer. So let's go ahead and plug it in. You heard it go off, opened up PowerShell. Okay. And there you go. So you can see that the blue C logs, right? So blue C is my username, got the key logger successfully on the computer. This is my Gmail. Now, you can access the logs anywhere because it's on your Gmail. So if you have your phone and you're signed in onto your Gmail, you're going to get the logs every hour. So we can look at our two directories right here, the temp directory and the startup directory. We can see that our c.cmd file and our blue c l.ps1 and p.ps1 are all here in the um, appropriate directory. So the USB rubber ducky did move everything, right? So now every time the computer starts up or every hour, you're going to receive logs from the USB rubber ducky, right? If we check our C.CMD, we can just run this again. My computer's being a little bit laggy, but you can see that we got the email notification again. If we wanted to, we could type in hello world, right? So that way there's logs now on the database, right? If we check the temp directory and we look at the blue C.logs, we can see if I drag over the blue log, it says hello world, right? So now it's saved onto the log that we have here. So now if we want to, when it's the next hour or next time the computer starts up, either or, I'm gonna just run it so that way it can just be sent because I'm not gonna sit here and wait for an hour. If we check my email, you can see it says hello world, right? It sent us the log from our computer. So now every hour or every startup, we're going to get logs from the ducky logger. That's it. So yeah, that's why I wanted to show you guys today. Um, I appreciate you guys standing by watching this cool payload. I know it took me a second to add these updates, but hey, 
now it works feel free to check it out i'll leave the link for the code in the description as always and yeah make sure to leave a like on this video subscribe and check out some of the cool content we have here um, much appreciated we're almost to 1k uh subscribers so it'd be really cool if you guys hit that subscribe button and we can get to 1000 um i am going to drop a song if we hit 1000 i was talking to the discord server by the way we do have a discord server check it out um but yeah Thank you guys very much for watching. Appreciate you guys a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next one. So stay happy, stay positive, And as always, happy hacking.